Numa Pompilius Garfield Adams, born 1885, died 1940, African-American physician. Born during the latter years of the 19th century, Numa P. G. Adams helped determine the quality of education for African-American doctors in the 20th century. Adams was the first African-American to be named Dean of Medicine at Howard University in 1929. As Dean, Adams not only recruited and inspired outstanding students, he strove to reform the curriculum and to improve the quality of doctor's training. Adams worked, as Joseph L. Johnson later reported in the Journal of the National Medical Association, to put the Howard University School of Medicine, quote, on a par with the best medical schools. Although Adams was not well appreciated by his contemporaries for his efforts, he is remembered for his tremendous influence at Howard and on various African-American physicians. Numa Pompilius Garfield Adams was born to Martha E. Matthews in Della Plain, Virginia, on February 26, 1885. His grandmother, a midwife, taught Adams about medicinal herbs, and he attended a country school led by his uncle. Just before the turn of the century, Adams' family moved to Steelton, Pennsylvania, where Adams excelled in high school. He graduated in 1905 and worked as a substitute teacher and a seventh grade teacher in Car Isle. Adams earned a bachelor's degree, summa cum laude, some sources say magna cum laude, from Howard University in 1911 and went on to earn an MA in chemistry at Columbia University in 1912. He taught chemistry at Howard University for the next two years and became an assistant professor there in 1914. In 1915, Adams married the former Osceola Marie McCarthy, and eventually they had a son, Charles. Adams continued his career at Howard with a promotion to associate professor in 1919, and he also served as the chair of the chemistry department. Despite his success in the chemistry department, Adams left Howard in 1919 to begin studies at the Rush Medical School at the University of Chicago. Adams worked his way through school by playing the cornet and then the saxophone with the Lyric Orchestra, a dance band. Adams earned an MD in 1924 and was initiated into the Alpha Omega Alpha fraternity in the Rush chapter. Adams began work as an intern that same year at St. Louis City Hospital No. 2, parentheses, the Homer G. Phillips Hospital. He practiced medicine from 1925 to 1929 in Chicago, and from 1927 to 1929, he served as the assistant medical director for the Victory Life Insurance Company. At this time, African American medical schools were challenged by recent advances in medicine and by funding difficulties. Howard University School of Medicine, along with Mihari Medical College, were among the only surviving such schools, and they were struggling to maintain accreditation. Although Howard had been open to train both African American and white students since 1868, the school had never had an African American dean. This ended when the president of Howard University selected Adams for the position, and Adams became dean in June 1929. In 1930, he was also appointed as professor of medicine at Howard. Adams had a number of difficult tasks to complete when he arrived at Howard, and while working virtually alone, he made significant advancements. Adams' first challenge was to reorganize the curriculum at Howard. He also did everything he could to bring excellent African-American instructors from all over the country to the school. He secured funding to train African-American physicians for teaching positions and made a point of utilizing the Freedmen's Hospital in teaching. Another of Adams' policies involved the strengthening of the Howard's me medical students. Adams enforced these policies by raising entrance standards. He was subject to a great deal of criticism, however, as the size of entering classes began to decline. Through his efforts, Adams not only shaped Howard as a distinguished medical school, he encouraged African-American students to make their own paths in medicine. For example, Charles R. Drew, the first person to set up a blood bank, was considered in high esteem by Adams. During the years he worked as dean at Howard, Adams also taught neurology and psychiatry at the Provident Hospital School of Nursing. 
Over the course of his career, Adams served as a member of the National Medical Association and a member of the Board of Directors of the Tuberculosis Association of the District of Columbia. He was a member of the Advisory Health Council of Washington, the Council on Social Agencies, and the Cook County Physicians Association in Illinois. He was also a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences. Recalling Adams in 1951, his colleague, Dr. W. Montauk Cobb, described him as, quote, a man of slight build, handsome, kindly face, and shy, retiring manner. Besides taking delight in music, Adams enjoyed traveling from Washington, D.C., where he lived, to Fauquier County, where he grew up. According to Cobb, Adams, quote, and his wife would walk for hours through the woods over familiar ground, so rich in memories. By some strange magic, he seemed to gather strength there to come back and carry on. When Adams relaxed with friends, he demonstrated his humor and wit. Adams died in Chicago on August 29, 1940, of pneumonia after an operation without gaining the without gaining the uncontested faith of his peers at Howard. Nevertheless, by the early to mid-1950s, recognition for his work at Howard emerged. Adams was featured in the January 1951 volume of the Journal of the National Medical Association and his portrait graced the cover of a 1955 volume of the journal. In a tribute to Adams, the dean of Howard University School of Medicine at the time, Joseph L. Johnson, wrote that Adams was a great man who cared about his patients. Johnson continued, To know Numa Adams was to respect, to admire, and to love him. He was a brilliant mind. In another tribute, the former associate medical director of the Rockefeller Foundation, Dr. Robert A. Lambert, described Adam as a man of wisdom, fine sensibility, clear judgment, patient determination, and courageous action. Citations and sources for this audio log are in the description below.